me, or does it seem like every animated movie since 2005 starts with a bunch of birds flying around, whatever the setting of the movie is? Using Chloe Grace Moretz as a diving board. Ah yes, Tom and Jerry, that cartoon so well known for its scat and douse humor. Also, this bird that just got shit on is absolutely ready to rap after getting his face completely covered in crap. The director said, let's have Tom eating an apple at the beginning of this movie. It'll make him look like even more of an asshole. Also, I'd like to think this means Tom is an asshole to the core. Both these birds survive this, ensuring the audience that there will be no consequences for the rampant cartoon violence we are about to witness. Ta -da! These guys are gonna have a lot of fun accidentally powering on the device that gets Scott Lang out of the quantum realm. This ain't that bad for a studio in New York. Proportionally speaking, that's got some decent square footage. Am I right, New York people? Am I right? Tom walks out of the 59th Street Columbus Circle Station, then walks all the way to Madison Square Garden, which is roughly 26 blocks away. It's not the worst walk, but why not just take the one train to Penn Station and make this easier on yourself, Tom? You're carrying a goddamn keyboard! Wait, if you start at Columbus Circle, there's no f***ing reason to walk past MSG on your way to Central Park. Apparently Tom couldn't draw enough of a crowd when he was just a mere cat playing the piano. He also had to pretend to be blind. I call bullshit on Jerry pulling this shit and every one of these assholes being okay with it. Then people think a dancing mouse is more impressive than a piano playing cat, and I'm not having it. One asshole even takes money from Tom's hat and puts it in Jerry's can. Was that even his money? You gotta be careful next time. You could have really hurt me. Yes, next time you're chasing a mouse through Central Park because he stole your blind cat playing piano money, be more careful. Suspended? Why? For starters, the hundred pounds of underwear strewn up Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue? That was Central Park's bridal path or some shit. Last week, I helped a man do a pull-up for an hour. What kind of job does Kayla have where she rides around on a bike with laundry through Central Park and somehow helping someone do a pull-up factors into it? By the end of this conversation, we have zero clue what this job is, and she quits before we even find out. The animosity between Tom and Jerry occurs because Jerry thought by stealing the extraordinary wealth of a street musician, he could get better living quarters. But now he just sees a hotel and realizes he can live here with no money. In other words, the Tom and Jerry rift is about as contrived as you can imagine. This is straight up animal abuse, but I guess in this world, since they're cartoons, it doesn't matter how much pain they inflict. But I'm gonna give it 25 cents anyway. Linda Perry Bottom, unfortunately, you just failed the test. Your interview started the minute that you walked in the door. It's pretty foolish that this works, but I'm more concerned that this kid's movie sets up a con artist as the main protagonist. So a decade from now, my old ass will have a steady supply of cold calls scheming to f me out of my retirement savings. Sure, they retcon this shit at the end, but do you really think I'm gonna get my money back after they spend it all on buying Teslas and taking trips on Jeff Bezos' penis rocket to some goddamn space resort? In fact, I'm gonna call him right now. Why was Linda Perrybottom forced to sit in the lobby, but Kayla brings that same woman's resume to the front desk and she gets an Insta call to be interviewed. Come on, boss! Preach! Preach to him! Definitely seems like the movie went out of its way to make this threatening gang of cats a certain stereotype, and it certainly ain't jellical. So are you gonna answer me? So the animal control officer drives by, seeing this bizarre gathering of cats, and is like, seems normal to me. But then hears a whistle and is all like, what the f*** is going on here? Maybe he only responds to whistles for help and not normal cries for help. This is important to know, because I can't whistle for s***. We have a very high profile event happening here this weekend. Oh yeah, let's talk about this hotel for a second. It has this huge celebrity wedding happening on the weekend, and they are only now hiring a coordinator with big event experience. Wouldn't this have happened months ago? Furthermore, they just let their resume speak for itself, and don't ask Kayla any questions about how she would plan for such a huge event. She thought the fish was in the alley department. Fish can't even walk. Terrence would be terrible at cinema sins. This place has been close to four presidents, three popes, two kings, one queen. How do you turn a six to ten minute cartoon into a movie that's over 90 minutes? Hotel's position, which may add artificial character to this hotel, but it won't matter at all by the time the movie is over. What the hell is Jerry's endgame here? Is he just making mischief for mischief's sake? And how are these copies possible without rearranging the very nature of how a copier works? You can't press your butt cheeks against the copier and do this pose. I call it the crowning jewel of the Royal Gate. Shouldn't you guys be hiring people and coordinating this huge celebrity wedding instead of all this time-wasting nonsense? Don't spill any on your Jordan 5s. These are actually retro reissues. <laughs> Obviously, it's the lace tips, Nike Lab, Flight Club. Movie has time for this, and it's completely unbelievable that someone as stuck up as Terrence would be okay with a member of a staff wearing sneakers. Also, no true sneakerhead is going to wear those to work. They're here? Oh, sure. Nobody radioed the events manager that the two celebrities were here. That's how things work at a top rated hotel. You never inform key people of things when they happen. I'm sorry, he's a little animated. Just jokes. We traditionally have a no pets policy. Like seriously, how unprepared is this hotel for their guests? Nothing about this place suggests they're this bad at their jobs. Wouldn't a representative for this couple iron out tons of details with the hotel's managers to prepare them for everything that's coming their way? The mouse ran right over his 
foot. How's Jerry getting past these screens so easily? Are all the screws in this hotel so loose that Jerry can access whatever room he wants? And I will handle it. I'll catch it, sir. Terrence does indeed let Kayla go search for a mouse running loose inside the hotel. But why would he waste her talent on that instead of calling a pest control person and telling them to be discreet? Everything in this room is a cleverly repurposed human item except this tiny rug. And if you say maybe it's from a dollhouse, then I would say why take a rug and not the rest of the furniture? And if you have any further comments, I'd say why am I nitpicking this movie in the first place? And why are you watching this video? And after millions of years of evolution, why have you and I found ourselves at this particular point in space and time having this completely fictional interaction? Then you might say you're trying to distract us from the point, and to that I would say you are correct. Moving on. I am on a mouse hunt, thank you. Oh yeah? Where's Nathan Lane? Lee Evans? Christopher Walken? Who is that? Uh, the sign of a worthy competitor. This could just as easily have been a practical joke by one of the other employees. Seems odd to jump straight to the belief that you are in competition with a mouse of superior intellect. Hey, well let's get back in there and smash that mouse up good. I'm actually wondering why Tom even cares about Jerry anymore. I think his revenge boner would have withered by now and he'd go looking for a new keyboard. I mean, if I am bored with this, why isn't he? Why is this window open during a rainstorm? These scissors aren't nearly enough scissor to cut this electrical cable. And besides, wouldn't this electrocute a tiny mouse? I don't think this asshole's grounded. Tim Burton's Catman? Since we're gonna find out later that Jerry can close this window on his own, why hasn't he simply closed this window already? Why hasn't Tom tried to do this before when trying to break into the hotel? Tom puts Jerry in the champagne bottle, shakes it up, and lets the champlosion pinball Jerry around instead of corking that mother and watching him drown. Have you located the room yet? I'm continuing to get noise complaints. First, she's hired to be an event coordinator, then a mouse catcher. Why did this hotel even need to fill that coordinator job? So we could hire an exterminator to have him tramp up and down this whole hotel, just filling it with his poison. Why is Kayla so confident that Tom can catch the mouse? He destroyed a room trying to kill Jerry. <laughs> What's her beef with exterminators? Is it because she saw over the hedge? I figured out who you are. Which really makes it sound like I figured out your lie, which is the only way to proceed after saying this sentence. Instead, I'm going to accuse you of being a millennial, which totally makes sense. I'll make sure you never work in New York City again. Because as an event manager at a hotel, I own this city. Triggering the memory of five-year-old me being hit in the head with a baseball bat by my older brother. Oh, my head swelled up really good. Fortunately, the bump looked less like an erection. Tom escapes from Spike and clearly goes all the way off screen and is presumably still running well out of reach of Spike, but Spike merely reaches out and grabs Tom like we didn't see that. Spike, get back here. Why is Ben in what looks like the administrative area of this hotel? I guess when you have a lot of money, people just stop saying no to you. Which is how I presume Colin Jost got cast in this role. Eat it, Jost. It was at that precise moment I felt that the three-point landing had surpassed cliché. It was somehow forging new ground in the depths of my soul. Rage? No, this was not rage. Amidst the turbidity and awful calculus and allowed transcendence into banal platitude from which there was no escape. The joy I had once felt in witness of its execution had now withered and was crumbling before me like a stale chocolate chip cookie from my youth. What is left, you say? A faint memory of sweetness, and a sin which cannot be forgiven. It is insanely ballsy that Jerry installed a swanky looking mouse door, complete with a do not disturb sign, right in the middle of this hallway. I thought Jerry's domicile was secluded, but apparently it's out in the open for anyone to discover. Oh wow, this is so detailed. What kind of tiny printer or... and it's scented? Kayla is more surprised by this tiny note than she is by the fully finished threshold and mouse door. So, simply put, this is a hotel, and you're a mouse, so... You gotta go. Movie doesn't work without distension, but even if this bat universe allows a mouse some sort of squatter's rights, am I supposed to believe there isn't some equally nonsensical process to have this cartoon character legally removed from the process? If cartoons can manipulate matter like this in the real world, then why haven't scientists discovered this sorcery yet? Do you know how useful this knowledge would be for real world applications? Open up the door! I know Kayla is really hoping Tom can make a discreet kill, but Jerry seems pretty trapped in this room he's made for himself. Kayla didn't want an exterminator to pump the whole hotel with poison. You've narrowed down exactly where Jerry lives. Call an exterminator for f**k's sake. Plus, not a single guest witnesses any of this commotion. An exterminator could make short work of this without being seen. Told myself I wasn't going to send Easter eggs this time around because they are apparently just part of the movie landscape now. However, I cannot condone reading a comic in the bathtub. The pages will warp. What do you think about elephants? This asshole's introducing the idea of elephants into the ceremony a day or two before the actual wedding. Babe, if getting elephants at the wedding would make you happy... You being happy would make me happy. How is this couple? This is like at the end of Sneakers when Liz tells Cosmo that she was on a computer date with Warner Brandis and he's like, a computer set you two up? And it's a dead giveaway that Martin Bishop is stealing the decryption box. Well, I'm the same way, except I'm replacing computer with casting director and instead of stealing a decryption box, I've decided to watch Tower Heist instead. 
I lost my ring. Skip! Prita, who doesn't want Ben knowing that she lost her ring, somehow makes this incredibly rookie move of showcasing her hands right in front of him. Also, there's no way he didn't notice the missing ring before this. I wonder what Michael Pena regrets more. Picking up animated crap in this movie, or being in Crash? I'm scooping the pub, huh? You saw he did it on There is no evidence Terrence picked up this crap, or that there's any crap left. And there's especially no evidence that Spike ate burritos, or whatever was supposed to make this more disgusting. Say a VIP person lost a ring. Kayla asked the bell girl about lost rings instead of just getting an idea of all the places Prita could have lost it. And apparently this place has zero cameras. Awesome! Tom built a mousetrap right out of the Rube Goldberg handbook. Sweet! Is OK Go gonna do the song for this? Because a Rube Goldberg machine without an OK Go song is just a rejected M.C. Escher painting at the bottom of the rhyme. Not a bulldozer in sight! I knew Tom's plan was all math and lies. But the lies are the bad part here, kids. Learn as much math as you can. You'll make so much goddamn money that you'll be able to tell all the lies you want. I'm not going to sin that this works, because it doesn't really, and this is a f***ing cartoon, but I am going to sin the fact that water flows through this coffee machine that fast and comes out this brown. That is not nearly enough time for a proper bean saturation. And before you launch into your theories about finds migration, you should know I don't care. You see, the problem with this is Tom already did something similar earlier in this movie, when he grabbed Jerry and threw him out the window. But then Jerry was there seconds after that. This is either going to be the same thing, or Jerry knows the British Royal Navy like Michael Caine does in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Sure, being thrown into a delivery truck isn't the same as being surrounded by a bunch of British Navy guys in the back of a van, but it makes about as much sense as Jerry's eventual escape from this. I am delighted to inform you that the job that we hired Tom for, it is completed. Oh, wonderful. Now we just have to figure out how to let him go without triggering an equal employment issue. This should only be an equal employment issue if he is firing Tom based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, age, disability, or genetic information. Mr. Dubro doesn't have to fire Tom based on discrimination, but he seems to be choosing to. Also, earlier the hotel was hiring all these temporary positions. Hell, Kayla's job is temporary. Why the f*** did he hire Tom full-time with benefits to do a task that would only need to be completed once? I don't know, I mean, whatever I can do to help with the wedding craziness. They seem really stressed out with it all. Ben doesn't seem stressed at all, and for that matter, neither does Prita, despite losing that giant ring. The mouse problem has officially been handled. It's funny that you discovered one mouse and figured it was the only one. I mean, where I came from, there were no real opportunities. Where's that? A small town in Penn State. Either there's a small town inside Penn State University, or Kayla's worried that people in New York City will confuse the state of Pennsylvania with Pennsylvania, Alabama. Jerry shows up back at the hotel as suspected. If the fragile sticker is stuck to him, doesn't that suggest he burrowed his way out of that crate and didn't have the common decency to clean up before he came back? Also, I don't remember Tom putting a fragile sticker on this crate before it went out. So maybe Jerry put the sticker on his body from some other crate on purpose? The uh, hotel's mouse problem's taken care of. But the hotel guest, sitting literally a few feet away and being able to hear about mouse problems hasn't been taken care of. No one saw a mouse. That's because everyone is dumb. These people in the background should have seen Jerry when he was bouncing on the piano. And they definitely should have seen him when he jumped out of Kayla's coat pocket. And surely everyone was watching when Jerry was riding a cloud to the fight tornado. Do you think you can handle the role of interim event manager? Honestly, I wondered why they even needed an event coordinator in the first place. An event manager and an event coordinator have separate jobs, sure, but if they can just fire the event manager and make her the interim one, why did they even need a coordinator? Wait, does she already have business cards made, or did another convenient document just happen to fall into her possession? You know what? You want to stay, right? Fine. One condition. You two have to prove to me that you can coexist together. Kayla doesn't know the first rule is never negotiate with terrorists. And if you believe Tom and Jerry or anything else, then we haven't been watching the same movie. I'm gonna plan an entire day for you two to spend together. Why does Jerry have any incentive to do any of this? Other than stupidly falling victim to a Rube Goldberg machine, he has done pretty well avoiding everybody while stealing food and building makeshift furnishings. I thought the private door to his room was ballsy, but a revolving door on the outside of the hotel? Where did he even get the materials for that sh And the doorman must have been caught napping to let this project go unseen and unheard. What do you want? I know Saturday Night Live's weekend update anchor Colin Jost wanted to get elephants for the wedding, but I thought the hotel staff would know about that before it happened. And I still can't believe anyone is powerful enough to get an elephant delivered to a New York hotel within 24 hours. Tom falls into the stanchion, which hits the pedestal, which somehow makes this dinosaur skeleton start to wobble. This is a case where I blame the museum more than the cartoon animals. Movie skips the first three hours of the day, which was apparently spent getting followbacks from every random asshole they could find on Instagram. Otherwise, I have to assume these 4,000 likes are due to the fact that they have been posting full nudes. This is the dumbest depiction of instant success since Ralph broke the internet, or whatever he did. Nobody remembers. So the animals in this movie can talk, sing, and have jobs, but are somehow still suitable for food. I guess it's not weird that I fantasize about discussing Chaucer with the Thanksgiving turkey right before having it cook the mashed potatoes and then hop its ass in the oven. Didn't you assholes just eat a big pizza? Why the f*** 
do you need raw fish now? After seeing all the stuff Jerry and Tom have done today, I'm beginning to think this is an impossible Ferris Bueller's Day Off situation. Top of the ninth inning, two out, and the Yankees up by one. Also, everything about this image suggests that they just got to the game. Multiple people are getting concessions and sitting down, it's daylight, and yet it's the ninth inning with two out? That ball is crushed. It wasn't. Also, it's clearly a foul ball since the Yankees left fielder is running toward foul territory. The ball game may be over. The Yankees could move on and... What the f*** is this announcer talking about in the middle of a home run? Even if it's a fake home run. First, you say, the ball is crushed and it only goes to the warning track. Then you start speculating about the Yankees winning the game a mere second later. The boom goes the dynamite guy wouldn't even say sh like this. Oh, what's this? A hairy fan has reached over and caught the ball. Jeffrey Mayer. Also, this is clear fan interference and this home run wouldn't count. Mayhem unfolds at Yankee Stadium. Tom and Jerry were apparently able to get seats to this game and buy food, but only after Tom mistakenly catches this ball is animal control called. So movie accurately depicts the lopsided priorities of Yankees fans? Two baseball fans seated in right field. Left field! If Ben is so worried about the wedding being perfect, why have we been seeing him playing with gadgets and goofing off the whole movie? Bring a mouse to an animal pound. If you don't start chewing, I don't understand why this cat believes he has power behind a cage, or why Tom believes that he does. Check this out! In celebrity news, Frida and Ben are tying the knot at a private intimate wedding. Unnecessary pigeon updates. Also, I wouldn't use the word intimate to describe this wedding. Wait, am I really going to pull apart the word usage of an animated bird? Yep. I think I might have just pulled this off. Premature celebration. The, the, the elephants are normal in this kind of events. Oh, we are an elephant-friendly establishment. The f*** is this guy? Why does anyone care about his questions? Also, what does he mean by these kind of events? Also, also, we are an elephant-friendly establishment is not an answer to this question. Real, imaginary, or animated, why does a trident need cocking? Oh, don't get me wrong, that's cool, but this is definitely not the film to explore that. I begged you to stop doing this stuff. I'm not trying to delve too deep into the inner workings of this relationship, but at no point do I recall her even asking him to stop. She even stated earlier that they don't argue or disagree anymore. You're dead, Mouse. No, he's not. Do you see someone blasting strobe or ghosts and stuff at this party? Oh no, guys, I think Kayla might get fired for this, which I think I'm supposed to care about for some reason. The Animal Tornado sequel does not include a shark. How the f*** did they rebuild this lobby after it got totally thrashed by Tom and Jerry and Spike earlier? Why was that even a problem if they could fix it in five hours? I know there's a lot of commotion in one room and the elephants just trampled through the lobby, but why does that mean the hotel sign loses power? That the wedding's off. Aw, this celebrity couple who are clearly a mismatch and whose successful wedding changes nothing is sad. Anyway, we know she's gonna marry Kayla later because they were clearly vibing each other. No, not that way. Everything is sad, so it must be raining outside, cliche. Where's Jerry getting these super small branded coffee cups? And why did he spend all that time stealing other people's if he can find miniature versions of everything else? Come on, Kayla, everybody screws up. Yes, movie, teach the children to lie. Tell them there will be no consequences. Listen, Kayla, you're gonna get the skills. You already got the smarts, you got the funny, and you got the love of helping people. I know this after working as a bartender and seeing you sporadically for four days. I think that's Prita and Ben? You know that this is Prita and Ben after Tom draws one circle on this chalkboard? I think I found my new Pictionary and or charades partner. Okay guys, I know that you both don't get along. They've been getting along since you reunited with them and they gave you the idea to save the wedding. I know you can't talk, but I'm sure you can hear me. Why is she so sure? You have to get them before they make it to the bridge. Yeah, because when an angry bride crosses a bridge, you can't change her mind. Even so, she couldn't even get back in Manhattan if she wanted to. Seriously, they make it sound like once she makes it to the bridge, she'll instantly be on a plane. It's like 30 more minutes of traffic before they hit JFK. And then there's the usual airport nonsense. What the f*** does the bridge have to do with anything? It's very fortunate that this Suburban had its sunroof open the whole time for this to work. Follow them, let's go! If Prita's cat doesn't bite the rope attached to the drone and fly away, how are they going to convince Prita to go back to the hotel? Was this the plan? Anyway, good thing this happened before she crossed the bridge. This plan was doomed if she did that. I feel like there's no way they set up this wedding ceremony in the time it took Tom and Jerry to kidnap Prita's cat, but I no longer care! Here's a pity sin! This movie seems to be saying Terrence and Linda have some sort of attraction for each other, and why do they even introduce this possibility at the end? As I peruse my notes for this movie, I don't even think Terrence deserves love! Giving an acting credit to a fictional cat and fictional mouse and Bobby Carnival. Apparently this movie is so good it deserved an end credit scene, but I just watched it and that's not true. So how did this scene happen? Ben gets charged for two weddings, that's the joke. That's why you watch the credits, for sh like that. We all go a little mad sometimes.